Alter. Welcome, this is Laura O'Brien from the Irish Pagan School. Today we're going to talk about Lunasa in Ireland. The 1st of August, sometimes given as the 2nd, is Lunasa, spelled in a variety of different ways based on whether the spelling is Older Irish or more Modern Irish. The Modern Irish spelling is L-U-F-A-D-A N-A-S-A, Lunasa. It's also called Bron Trogan. This is the Harvest Festival in Ireland. In her excellent book, The Festival of Lunasa, Maura McNeil wrote, Garland Sunday and Daunach Cram Dove are two of the many names of a festival celebrated by Irish country people at the end of July or the beginning of August. It marked the end of summer and the beginning of the harvest season. And on that day, the first meal of the year's new food crop was eaten. The chief custom was the resorting of the rural communities to certain heights or water sides to spend the day in festivity, sports and bilberry picking. Lunasa in Irish mythology. Lunasa was mentioned in the old text, Chokmark Emer, the wooing of Emer, which Cúno Mair has dated to the 900s common era, along with a small piece on all the fire festivals. Quote, Ben Shuan, son of Rose Melk, which she said, this is the same thing, viz, that I shall fight without harm to myself, from Samhain, i.e. the end of summer, for two divisions were formerly on the year, viz. summer from Bialtana, the 1st of May, and winter from Samhain to Bialtana, or Saufun, viz. Suan sounds, for it is then that gentle voices sound, viz. Samson, gentle sound, to Oimok, i.e. the beginning of spring, is different, I-M-E, is its wet folk. Viz the wet of spring and the wet of winter. Or oi milk, viz oi, in the language of poetry, is a name for sheep, whence oiba, sheep's death, is named. Uth dikathur konba, dog's death. Echba, horse's death. Dinaba, men's death as bath is a name for death. Oi milk, then, is the time in which the sheep come out and are milked, whence ushk a ewe, i.e. oi shesk, viz a barren sheep. To beltina, i.e. beltina, viz a favouring fire, for the druids used to make two fires with great incantations and to drive the cattle between them against the plagues every year or to Belden, viz. Bel, the name of an idol. At the time, the young of every meat were placed in the possession of Bel, Beldena, then Beltina. To Brontrogan, i.e. Lamas Day, this is the one we're interested in for this particular episode, viz. the beginning of autumn, for it is then the earth is afflicted, viz. the earth under fruit. Trogon is the name for earth. That's a very complicated passage and you can find the full uh, script of it on my blog. It might be easier to read. The Festival of Lunasa began as a commemoration feast and games started by the Tua de Danon, God Lu, in honour of his foster mother, Talchu, a fair bullock queen. Yes, they were warring tribes. Yes, Talchu took in the child of an enemy and raised him as her own. There's a lesson there, people, for modern Ireland and around the world, I suppose. Lunasa in Irish folklore. In a fascinating entry recorded in the school's collection from County Clare, we hear the following. Thounoc Lunasa, or Lamas Sunday, the first Sunday of the month of August, was the first fruits day and a great day on Balia na Grania. On Lamas Sunday, called Thounoc Cram Dove, an anglicised Garland Sunday, Every household was supposed to feast his family and household on the first fruits, and the farmer who failed to provide his people with new potatoes, 
new bacon and white cabbage on that day was called a fella or wind farmer. And if a man dug new potatoes before Crom Dove's day, he was considered a needy man. And hence this Sunday was called First Fruits Sunday. On this day, all went to Bula, Bula Nagrena, excuse me, Bula Nagrena, with their contribution and their lawns or food supplies to hold the fair. The ceremonies consisted of strewing summer flowers on the altar and festive mound, of which we have been speaking up to this, under the name of Altor Nagrena, or Altar of the Sun but which is on this day used as the altar of Crom Dove. The assemblage of this day is called Kovhenol Crom Dove, or the congregation or gathering of Crom Dove. And the day is called for him Downach Crom Dove, or Crom Dove Sunday, now called Garland Sunday by the English-speaking portion of the people of the surrounding districts. The name is supposed to have been derived from the practice of strewing garlands of flowers on the festive mound on this day as homage to Crom Dove, hence the name Garland Sunday. Assuredly, I saw blossoms and flowers deposited upon it on the first Sunday of August, 1844, and put some upon it myself, as I saw done by those who were with me. I was then a mere lad, but very inquisitive. The assembly was at this time a mere gathering of boys. And that's from the school's collection, volume 0612, page 323, with thanks to the National Folklore Collection. According to Maura McNeil, the main theme that emerges from the folklore and rituals of Lunasa is a struggle for the harvest between two gods. One god, usually called Crom Dove, guards the grain as his treasure. The other god, Lu, must seize it for mankind. Talchu may have been an earth goddess who represented the dying vegetation that fed mankind. The Talchin Games, Talchin Fair, Enoch Talchin, Assembly of Talti, Fair of Talchu, or Festival of Talchi, were the funeral games which Lu started in her honour. There is still a complex of ancient earthworks dating to the Iron Age in the area of Telltown in County Meath, where the festival was historically known to be celebrated off and on from medieval times into the modern era. And just to finish with a little bit of my experience. On a personal note, I've always connected very strongly with the goddess Talchu. Indeed, I, was cho I chose her as my avatar and screen name when I moderated a popular English witchcraft forum many years ago. The pronunciation was always fun, tall chew, as I've been saying, and earned me the nickname of Chewy. So nothing to do with Star Wars if you do remember me from those dim and misty times. My first introduction to the Irish pagan community back in 1996, I think, was to represent the goddess tall chew in a ritual reenactment of a sacred procession organised by Chris Thompson up in Leitrim of story archaeology fame. This was in protest at the landowner at the time, attempting to dig up one or some of the mounds, and was filmed by the nationwide programme for our national broadcaster, RTE, so no pressure. And if anyone can source a copy of that segment, I would love to see it, I'd be most grateful. If you'd like to learn more about the history and practice of pagan holidays or pagan festivals in Ireland, you can go to lauraobrien.ie and search on my blog for holidays, festivals or Lunasa. Or you can go and learn about the beliefs, Irish mythology, folklore and magic of the turning of the year in Ireland at the Irish Pagan School. It's a class there called Seasons and Sacred Cycles. And we have at least two Lunasa classes, one taught by myself, Laura O'Brien, and a Lunasa ritual and practice class that is taught by Orla Costello. So they're up at the irishpaganschool.com if you want to learn more. Thank you for your attention today. Sláinte